So with that, I'm going to give, uh, go through a few slides as a precursor to the video, which I think you're all going to greatly enjoy. Uh, so again, why Lincoln? Well, it's kind of a convergence of things. Uh, we have quite a presence here. We have the, of course, state office. We have the National Soil, Soil Survey Center. We have the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory and the National Soil Mechanics Laboratory. We're going to bring all of those together in this new modernized facility, and we're quite excited about that. This is also the location where we do all of the National Boot Camp uh, conservation planning training. I think we bring together about uh, close to 300 employees receive that training right now uh, on the national scale in an annual basis. Uh, in addition, I've already mentioned the center, and I'll come back to that. And of course, this great facility here and the great partner with the University of Nebraska and the Innovation Campus. Uh, so all this is a, a great convergence, a great opportunity. We all know that uh, Chief Bennett also came to Lincoln a number of times during his career. In fact, John Verana, the great historian that he is, found some of his travel vouchers. And what's interesting, <laughs> you can see the taxi cab was 35 cents, uh, the luggage 25 cents. Uh, how we wish those were the same rates today, right? Uh, what's interesting too for federal employees, he had to deduct for the lunches that were provided not at the government expense. So. <laughs> That holds true today also. And as we've mentioned, uh, we're very pleased to have the Bennett family uh, in attendance. Carolyn Bennett Wextrom and Brian Wextrom. And Carolyn, you will see, is in the video. And it is a great honor for us to have you here, and we do greatly appreciate it. So in your packets, uh, you have received a reproduction of soil erosion, a national menace. And if I were to look back, this is the one central publication that really laid out the challenge of soil erosion in this country. And really, perhaps more than any publication, was the origins of this conservation movement. So I really uh, encourage you to read uh, Chief Bennett's piece in there. There's also a section by uh, uh, Mr. Chapline very important material, but it was really the foundation of this conservation movement. Uh, in addition, uh, many of us have read about and seen video clips of Chief Bennett for years, and uh, it just so happens we found all of these terms that apply to him that begin with the letter P. I'll credit John for that. But these are all very true terms. Uh, those of us that uh, have studied his writings, etc., a very passionate person, prophetic for sure, prolific writer, and the next slide will actually demonstrate that. Perceptive, persuasive, positive, perseverant, certainly a planner, a conservation planner, very practical with his solutions, certainly a partner. He's the one that originated this partnership that we all support and love dearly today. Very professional. We think of him in a paternal way too because he is the father of soil conservation. Very personable, very powerful person, certainly a pioneer and very profound. And the quote at the bottom there, many of you have read the new book, uh, Grit, The Power of Persuasion and Perseverance, but enthusiasm is common, endurance is rare, and certainly Chief Bennett showed a great deal of endurance for many decades. So I mentioned pro prolific writer. Uh, John Verona has gone through some of the archives, and those are actually Chief Bennett's writings on the left there. I really like the fact that he wrote by hand. I, I still do that. So. <laughs> But uh, he was certainly a very pro prolific uh, writer. In addition, he started many domestic efforts. Some of these preceded uh, the Soil Conservation Service and even the Soil Erosion Service. Uh, Bob Jones, uh, state conservationist in Alaska, I was in Alaska last summer, and shared with me some of the work from the Soil Reconnaissance Survey that he did there. We'll see that in the next slide. Of course, Louisa County is referred to in the video uh, by former Chief Dave White. National Erosion Studies, the effort with uh, SCS and the Civilian Conservation Corps, the demonstration farms, the demonstration watersheds, and of course conservation planning, which we hold near and dear as our core competency still to this day. So I mentioned the uh, soil reconnaissance in Alaska. Looks like the map unfortunately did not show up there, but uh, this is some work that Bob Jones shared, 1915. Uh, this was a high order soil survey of Alaska. In addition, I mentioned the Civilian Conservation Corps. So SES worked with and supervised 800 of the 4,500 Civilian Conservation Corps uh, camps. 
So the Thrasher Farm, this was an example of a demonstration farm in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, they had basically uh, a one-day event and applied all of the conservation. I believe the farm was 175 acres and still exists today, although I believe some of it has been developed, unfortunately, since that time. And then many of you have been, as myself, to the Coon Creek watershed in Wisconsin, very historic watershed, and some of the origins of uh, partnerships efforts on watershed conservation. And so here's some pictures from then. In addition, I think you also recognize that Chief Bennett and some of his staff, Mr. Loudermilk and others, were very active internationally. And so here's some evidence of that and how some of these uh, days were named in different countries because of Chief Bennett's uh, efforts. So what does uh, Chief Bennett mean to NRCS for sure and certainly to this partnership too? We all recognize him as the father of soil conservation. Certainly the first chief of the Soil Erosion Service when it was interior for two years and then moved over as the Soil Conservation Service in 1935 to the Department of Agriculture. He also believes strongly, as you recognize, in local leadership, local partnerships, and this federal, state, local partnership. And then, of course, uh, along with President Roosevelt, um, proposed the sample state soil conservation law, which has now formed 3,000 conservation districts across this, across this country. In addition, as you look through his writings, uh, and he didn't always call them principles, but we now call them principles. The Bennett principles, and I'll go through this in a bit, really hold true today. So I've already mentioned the 1935 Soil Conservation Act, and you'll hear in the video from Chief Bennett uh, about his experience on the Hill related to that. Uh, and I, I think uh, you'll, you'll get some good footage there that you may not have seen before regarding uh, that exchange. So conservation planning, uh, really the origins of conservation planning took place with Chief Bennett and his staff. And this is one of the famous quotes that we've used in the National Conservation <coughs> Planning Partnership. There is no virtue in planning merely for the sake of planning. Unless plans can be translated into action, planning becomes a profitless mental exercise. So it's all about action as a result of that plan. So we're also very pleased that earlier this year, uh, before Chief Weller departed, we got to open the UHAM and Bennett Conference Room in the USDA South Building. So we now have a very uh, comfortable, professional conference room. We're proud. And we have a plaque hanging in the room that uh, honors uh, Chief Bennett. And of course, I think you all recognize the first conservation district was the Brown Creek Soil Conservation District in North Carolina included Anson County and parts of Union County. Um, I'm very pleased that I actually started my career in Union County and uh, got to go out to the home site for a uh, cleanup day back in the early 80s. And here's a picture of the residence as it existed. So we've made reference to uh, Chief Bennett's passion for local leadership and partnerships. Hopefully you've seen these quotes before but I think they're quite instructive. Uh, the one I really like there is, I consider the Soil Conservation District's movement one of the most important developments in the whole history of agriculture. And I think that has proven out. So, um, the Bennett Principles. I've referred to these, and I really need to give credit to former Chief Dave White. Many of you will remember in Orlando at the NACD meeting a number of years ago, he kind of laid these out in his very artful manner, as only Dave White can do. And um, there's five of them that we identify with, but there are certainly many more than that. Uh, the one we really like is you've got to do the conservation work in the field. You can't be behind the truck windshield. How true that is. Good science is the foundation for what we do in our conservation arena. And then the natural resources concerns are not dealt with in isolation. In isolation. They're an integrated system. In addition, we have to have coordinated action and hopefully focused on the watershed or landscape scales. It's an old lesson that we've reintroduced in a much stronger way. And then again, local leadership is critical to success. So another thing, as you recognize, Chief Bennett was very bold, very courageous, and really only his personal leadership 
probably could have accomplished what was accomplished uh, with the formation of this conservation movement. And then we have changed over the years as an agency, obviously. We've got new authorities, new responsibilities. While we were very focused originally on soil conservation and its impacts, we've now dealing with all of the natural resources as the entire partnership is. And what's really neat is the growth in the partnership opportunities that has occurred through the farm bills. And some of the tools we have now and the leveraging we can do is just phenomenal. For example, with agreements, cooperative agreements and contribution agreements, we do uh, almost a billion dollars per year through that vehicle, which then brings in equal or greater resources from partnerships and grows that opportunity for private lands conservation. So I mentioned the center, and uh, we're very pleased about this. So GSA has given us the go ahead, and basically we will advertise within a constrained area here, right around this campus, including a few other areas. We can't say for sure we will wind up on this campus, uh, but we hope that the process leads us to that result because this partnership would be very, uh, very beneficial. But we're going to combine those facilities into one modernized area. This is a heavy area for lab activity regarding NRCS, and uh, so we're at the early stages of that RFP process. And then this map just shows you the geographic area. It's the green area. Uh, and it does not really include the downtown, but it includes this campus area. So let me move now to the, uh, the video, and actually John prefers to call this a movie because this is a really quality product, and a lot of people had a major hand in this. Uh, the department, Patrick uh, J. O'Leary, obviously played a key role. Uh, Erica Cross, who's an NRCS employee, was uh, the writer. Uh, Sheldon Smith is a narrator, and then there was a videographer, Cynthia Mendoza. And then there were a number of NRCS folks involved in different ways, and Kavi and John played very significant roles. And uh, it's just a quality product. And uh, we will, of course, uh, release this, but we're going to use a very strategic approach because uh, this affords the partnership a great opportunity to educate folks about the conservation movement. Some of the people you will see in the video, uh, many of you recall and know Maurice Cook um, at NC State, and of course I've already mentioned former Chief Dave White. Uh, Jim Gillis, who I think uh, Leonard knows from Georgia and is about 100 years old, I believe. Over 100. Over 100. Uh, and new, new Chief Bennett is in the video. And of course, uh, Carolyn Bennett Wexstrom is in the video. Tells an interesting story about driving, I think. <laughs> uh, and then we have uh, uh, the good doctor from uh, Langston University, which is in Oklahoma, I believe, and former chief uh, Jason Weller. We have Doug Helms, our former historian, now retired. Lee McDaniel, past president of NACD. Our state conservationist uh, in Maryland, Teron Hillsman, and also former chief Bill Richards. So what we'd like to do now is show the video, and then after the video, if we could, we'd like the uh, five heads of the agencies and organizations to come down, and the Bennetts, and if we could get some pictures, and uh, we have a presentation for you also. So with that, uh, Kavi, it's all yours. <laughs> 